U.S. President Barack Obama has said that before any drone strike is taken, there must be near certainty that no civilians will be killed or injured. Yet during one five-month period, nearly 90% of people killed by U.S. drone strikes in Afghanistan were not the intended targets. That's according to the Drone Papers, a new report by The Intercept based on leaked U.S. documents. So do drone strikes create more terrorists than they kill? I'm joined in the arena to debate this by Glenn Greenwald, best-selling author, award-winning journalist and founding editor of The Intercept, and Christine Fair, Professor of Security Studies at Georgetown University, who has worked in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Thank you for, for joining me in the arena. Uh, Glenn Greenwald, you've been a long-standing critic of US drone strikes. You've said drones constitute a campaign of terror in places like Pakistan. What do the leaked documents published by The Intercept tell us that's new, that in your view strengthens the case against drones? What they do primarily is confirm what the people in the regions where the drones have been killing people have been saying, which is that far more often than not, they're killing people not who are the targets, but who are actually innocent. Um, one document in particular, the one that you just referenced, is one of the ones that made the source who has worked with these programs come forward um, that has said that nine out of ten of the people they kill are not the targets. Um, and you've heard this from people in Afghanistan and Pakistan continuously. You've heard it from researchers and scientists and other people who have studied it, um, who have said that the reason we're constantly turning more people into terrorists than we're killing is because the anger and rage from these innocent victims is what then causes people to want to bring violence to the United States. Christine Fair, you've called drones the most successful tool that the United States and Pakistan have to eliminate dangerous militants. But if nine out of 10 drone strikes are not getting the person they're supposed to get, how is that a successful tool? How is that not going to so upset actually, and exacerbate the Well, I'm going to push back on several things that Glenn said. Many of the statements that he just made are not empirically buttressed. Many of the people that write about this actually haven't been to Pakistan where the drones are actually used. And so you actually have this problem. Um, we don't know who was targeted, and we don't know who was actually killed. And, and I'm going to argue that this actually isn't knowable with the tools that have been used thus far. There's only one uh, journalist who's actually done this in what I think is the most empirically defensible way, and that's a journalist, uh, Chris Albrighton, with the Associated Press. He actually sent a stringer to Waziristan, and he began talking to the locals. And, and what, what was he, his conclusion? His anyway? conclusions were, with the exception of one catastrophic drone strike, which really was a humongous mistake, about 90% of the people killed by the locals said the locals themselves said about 90 percent of them were militants. So we have a big difference of opinion between those people who are based in Lahore, you know, the, the cosmopolitan elites, who view drones as a, a violation of Pakistani sovereignty and all the legal issues that get raised. But when you are talking to the people who live in the proximity of the militants, they have a very different story. Let me mention one. Well, well, you've talked for a really other, long time, so I'm, maybe I'm I can address facts, some of the things that you actually said. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me respond to a couple of the points. Yeah, I'd like to, so there's actually a person who lives in the region who happens to be the winner of the 2014 Nobel Peace Prize. Who doesn't know anything about Fatah you're talking about Malala Yousafzai. Right. She knows nothing and about she actually, drones, and she, and she, she, she about went Fata. to uh, are not using the White PPK. House and spoke with President Obama, and what she said was not, thank you so much for using drones to kill the militants who put a bullet into my head and who are trying to suppress the rights of girls. What she said in her statement was, quote, I expressed my concern that drones are fueling terrorism. Innocent victims are killed, and they lead to resentment among the Pakistani people. It's what the same study, the same conclusions from the NYU Stanford study said. And the lead reporter on the story in The Intercept on drones is Jeremy Scahill, who has spent many years in all of the regions in which He's drones have fallen, including in Afghanistan, Yemen and Somalia. Nonsense. He made a film that was nominated for an Academy Award and wrote a 600-page book about dirty wars. There is abundant evidence no, okay, that drones okay, are killing innocent people. people. You have to be pathological to deny it at this point. I guess all Muslim countries and all Muslim polities and all Muslim legal systems in Muslim countries are the same to you. I actually bring nuance to this. I'm sorry, I cannot well, accept Christine, let me put some nuance to you. The British government yes. did polling in Pakistan's tribal areas a few years ago. This is a British government on CIA drone strikes. They found in the tribal areas 59% of the public in two 2010 said they were never justified. That went up to 63% in 2011. Who yeah. knows what it is well, today? So the polling, the polling doesn't quite support no, no, what you're saying. Actually, no, actually, the, 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 what, you, you, what you don't understand is how polling, I actually do a lot of polling in Pakistan. What you find is that a lot of people don't answer the question at all. But the ones who do. Well, but you're not, you're missing the science of this. This is called social desirability bias. Okay. So you, I'm going to argue, and 
that it's very difficult to do this well because the person doesn't know the person doing the survey work. Now, I also want to go back to the NYU report. I'm pro-choice. If Planned Parenthood did a study that talked about the benefits of abortion, we would immediately call the nonsense flag on that report. The NYU Stanford study was supported, facilitated in every way, shape, or form by FFR and Reprieve, which is an advocacy group avowedly against drones. They did not include that, any of the pro-drone voices. And I'm going to let Glenn and respond to you. No, you made but I'm going to make my I final quick, point. A quick point no. on my own question. The British government, though, are not an advocacy group against drones. So you dismissed the British government's no, no, poll as I'm well. No, no, actually, what I'm telling you, and again, the nuance may not be appreciated here. Polling work in conflict yeah. areas is very difficult to elicit the truth because the person does not know is the survey person in question CIA? Are they ISI? Are they the militant? And actually, the militant organizations. So are you saying we can't know? Is that I'm, the... I'm telling you that you can't know, but I'm going to tell you. But I want to go to the point of Abba Very Beale. briefly. It is a very brief point because this speaks to how some people view the drones, which are very different from people like Glenn okay. Greenwald. You're familiar with Surat al Field in the Quran when a army of elephants attacked the I'm Kaaba. I'm worried this isn't going to be brief. We've got limited it, time. I'm going to tell you okay. how brief it is. In right. blacks, you should know the Quran, I'm presuming, Surat the Field. So the black swallows who dropped stones to repel the elephant army that was attacking Kaaba, those who live in proximity to the terrorists, they call drones Ababil. So this is a voice that you folks Glenn try Greenwald, to exclude. Being this is just rank propaganda at this it's point. You have this mountain you of, are, are you data. capable of, of yeah. remaining you're, you're, quiet you're, while you're, other people speak? You made a very long point. Let Glenn make you his so there is this mountain. There is this mountain of evidence. You have the There's NYU no Stanford. Hold on, Christine. Let you have this point. NYU Stanford study. Which you have the study. data it's of the advocacy. Bureau of Investigative Journalism. You have the documents advocacy. that were just provided to us by this source. You have the statement of the 2014 Nobel, Pri Pakistan. Nobel Prize uh, Peace Prize winner. A 16-year-old. Um, you have on, 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 You're not letting Glenn make his point because she doesn't want it to be known that there's an abundance of data. He's quoting reports. You can respond to the reports. Evidence. So, names, and then on the other side, you have someone who said, I am the anointed spokesperson of the Pakistani people. I went there and some have whispered to me that they, they like drones. They, let me, let me cite a professor at, you know, let me, let me cite a professor at we'll Georgetown University who is a specialist in, in South Asia, Sarah, Sarah Wahid, who wrote in the nation in October 2014 about Professor Fair and other cheerleaders for drone programs and what they're doing. And she said, quote, the anti-human rights message is clear. The voices of people who live under the threat of drones are inherently unreliable, much more, much less reliable than state officials or elite liberal Pakistanis who favor drone strikes. There is enormous amounts of evidence that because of the number of innocent people that we're killing, not just in Pakistan, but Afghanistan, Yemen, Somalia, but also in that region, that there is a great amount of anti american American sentiment. There are Pew polls, global polls, that show that 66% of Pakistanis disapprove of drone strikes. 3% approve it. That's the Pew Global poll from 2014. Also mistaken. Um, and so all she does is attack all of the people, all of the researchers, all of the journalists, all of the defense well, me, officials me, well, who have put, said so. Let me put this point back to you. You're saying the polling is, uh, we're not being nuanced on the polling, you're let saying, hold on, let me finish says. my question, then you can yes. come back. Uh, you're saying Malala uh, doesn't know what she's talking about. General Stanley McChrystal, who's not an advocacy mm -hmm. man, uh, former head of the U.S. forces in Afghanistan, has said the resentment created by U.S. drones is much greater than the average American appreciates. They are hated on a visceral level. Senator Crystal actually doesn't know Pakistan. And here I'm going to tell you something else. You, it's a very common bromide to say drones make more terrorists. Would you believe there's no evidence for it? But I'm going to tell you one thing for which there is very good evidence. The drone program in Pakistan has resulted in a cessation in certain kinds of attacks which are correlated with the drone strikes. For example, I'm going to give you a very good example. The way the drone strikes work um, is that they there's a concept of quality of terror in terms of the kinds of attacks that they can perpetrate and the quantity. Okay. Both the quality and quantity have declined. Well, let me the put TTP, that to Glenn. He, I haven't made a point. The TTP you did make have points. not been able to attack the kinds let me of put that point headquarters of the they, military they, are, that they did in the past. Would you concede that in some areas, regardless of what you think about the morality, regardless of the innocent people getting killed, on an effectiveness basis, they are taking out people like Baitullah Massoud, former head of the Pakistani it, Taliban? It's not, just that. it's not just General McChrystal. Here's what... General Michael Flynn, who ran the Defense Intelligence Agency, told The Intercept last week, my media outlet, about drones. Even when it works, even when we take out a big name, he said, quote, it makes us all feel good for 24 hours. And you know what? 
it doesn't matter. It just makes them a martyr, they get replaced, it just creates a new reason for all of them to fight us even harder. Let me ask he you this, Glenn. Let me ask you this, Glenn. Is there any case that everybody in the world okay. well, doesn't know what put, they're put talking the data about argument, for her? Put the no data, data argument to one side for a moment. Let me data ask you this question. Important. Well, data are yeah, important. And, and we're he's, arguing over the data. You're rejecting the data that Glenn cited. We've, we've he's established he's that. A, he's citing opinion. He's not no, citing data. I think that's unfair. I mean, he cited the New York University report. You say you don't like the report, but it's still data. No, let me tell you what's wrong with you. The New, no, York, the New York University School of Law found that, that is an advocacy-driven report. That's not the so same. So everyone thing is research. advocating except you. I'm actually You're the I'm, only objective source. No, I'm no, just wondering no. if New York University, Stanford NYU's University, the Bureau of Investigative Journalism, the top, top levels of the U.S. military. Planned Parenthood did a report that I talked know, about the virtues of abortion. But I quoted the British government and Stanley McChrystal. But reprieve FFR is an advocacy organization, and you think that report is fine? Okay, you made that point. Can we move the discussion on? I want to ask Glenn a question. Would you concede that in certain instances, for example? example, the killing of Baitullah Massoud, leader of the Pakistani Taliban, by a drone strike in 2009. Would you say, actually, that one I'm fine with? I think that everybody agrees that there are certain legitimate targets for the U.S. government to kill. Nobody disputes that. That's never been in dispute. The problem is, is that we've been actually engaged in this global assassination program for 14 years now, and there's absolutely no sign that any of this is getting better. In fact, it's the position of every Western government that the Why threat of Pakistan terrorism is, still still the, the the threat of terrorism is actually worse than it's ever been. If you talk to people, Nonsense. for example, in Yemen, they will tell you that until 2009, there was no al-Qaeda presence in Yemen. Only once the U.S. began drone attacking and killing innocent civilians did the Yemeni population be, get driven into the arms of Islamic radicals. I interviewed Ben Rhodes recently, Obama's deputy national security officer. He said it's a weapon of war. People die with a weapon of war. What do you say to people who say, why are you obsessed with the technology, with the method of killing? What right does the U.S. government have to go around the world meeting in secret, essentially accusing people of being terrorists, of committing crimes, convicting them in secret, no due process, no evidence of any kind being presented, and then simply deleting them from the earth. The last several years, for me, what's been most dismaying is that the targets that we are eliminating in FATA are not, strictly speaking, to my view, in compliant with the authorization for the use of military force. We are mostly using our program to kill Pakistan's terrorists. We are no longer killing individuals that pose a threat to us directly. Right? Or to anyone. She's at, not only is she right not, about that, not only is she right about that, she is right about that. The documents that we released, I think one of the most significant revelations is that it's not just that the people that we're killing aren't direct threats to us in the way that the original AUMF authorized, namely the people who did 9-11 or those who are associated with them. A lot of the people we're killing are just local militants who are interested in the local conflicts who are purposely targeting, not just accidentally killing, um, in a way that's way beyond what Congress ever authorized and what the American people probably would think is justified. Um, this has become an absolutely a war, a war that has absolutely expanded far beyond its original intention. We're going to have to leave it there. We've run out of time. Thank you both for joining me in the arena. That's our show. Up front, we'll be back next week.